So if you go to this question that we've got here in your booklet, we're going to do this one that we have as well. We almost were going to do this last lesson, we just didn't quite have enough time. So this time it says, on the same diagram, sketch the curves with equations y equals 4 over x squared and y equals x squared x minus 3. Um, so we'll just do that before we even read the next part of the question. And I'm going to start off by drawing some axes for this. And then I'm going to start off by thinking about what this graph will look like. So this is a reciprocal graph. It's a something over x squared graph. What does that one look like? Can you just show me with your hands what that looks like? Careful. It's like, yeah, it's like the one that Amina's just said there. It's the one that looks like kind of the praying hands together. Because of the squared part, you don't have anything in the negative section. So this is my, this is my y equals 4 over x squared graph. And then my next graph that I've got here, which I'm going to do in a different color, is x squared brackets x minus 3. What kind of graph is that? It's cubic. It's a positive cubic. And it's got, tell me about the roots. Plus 3 and 0, there's a repeated root on 0. So that means there's going to be a repeated root on 0, and there's going to be something over here at 3. So I'm going to go up like this. I'm going to do a repeated root, and then I'm going to go here like this for the 3. OK? Nice and easy to draw those graphs together. You've done some of those for your homework as well. But then it says, state, giving a reason, the number of real solutions to the equation that they've got written here. And the equation that they've got written here is 4 over x squared minus x squared x minus 3 equals 0. Well, where does that equation come from? How does that equation link to the two equations that they had written on the board? The two. So they've, they've been made equal to each other. So this equation, if I rearrange this, I have 4 over x squared equals x squared x minus 3. So this is the reason. The solution to the equation is the simultaneous equation of the two graphs. And how many solutions do you think there will be for this simultaneous equation, and why? One solution, because because there is only one point of intersection here. So I've said the solution to this equation is the simultaneous equations of the two graphs. The curves intersect or cross only once. So there is one solution, one real solution. So however many times it crosses tells you how many solutions that we should be expecting or anticipating in the question. Now the equation, I'll give you a bit of time to write that down. Good. The real solutions are how many times they intersect each other. So this graph only intersects once, so there's only going to be one real solution. But this was the equation that they gave us, that they wanted to say how many real solutions has it got. Imagine that one's quite easy to see, that it is just this one being equal to this one, which we know is simultaneous equations. If they gave you something and it was more like this, and they said, how many solutions does this equation have? What do you think you might need to do to this one to be able to link it to the question? What's different about this one? If they said, how many solutions does this equation have? One of the, um, the only one equation for a graph. I don't think either of these bits looks like the equations that they've given us. I think they look similar but different. How do they look different? You times it by x squared. 
Uh, good, I times it by x squared. So if they gave you this and they said, okay, you've just sketched these two graphs, now tell me how many solutions this one has got, you may be required to do some algebraic manipulation first. So what you may do to this one is you might say, okay, well, I'll put this to the other side so I get 4 equals x to the power of 4 x minus 3. And then how can I start making the 4 look like the equation that we've been describing? Divide it by x squared. If I divide this by x squared, I would divide this side by x squared, and then I get the two curves again. So some of the questions that you will do, the equation that they're asking for you to say how many real solutions there are, there may require some rearranging and some manipulation so that you can make it the two equations that you have being e always equal to each other, because that's the idea of them being simultaneous equations. So you may require algebraic manipulation first. So I was just going to say, if the equation they ask about was, if it was this, then you'd need to do something to it first of all, OK? And don't be, uh, don't be alarmed if one of the questions you try later, you're like, huh, how does this link back to the previous ones? What I've found in the past is students often will do like part A of a question, then they would see something like this as part B of a question, and they wouldn't even try and link the two things together. But if a question goes A, B, C, they are all themed on the same thing, and usually using the previous part is going to be helpful. So the previous part of the question would have been sketch this, the second part of the question might have been, say how many solutions this has got. They don't even need you to solve it. They just need you to rearrange it and then say it only crosses in one place. Okay? Notice how this question just says, um, show how many real solutions. It never said, solve this equation. Okay?